What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video, where we cover cool vanilla JS topics that might come in handy while working on various JavaScript apps. And today I want to show you a neat helper function to select elements in vanilla JS. Now, before we continue, let me just say that it only makes sense if you're working on a bigger vanilla JS project. And there are multiple ways how you can do that. So by any means, this is not the only way. This is just my method. And in fact, if you have a better one, feel free to share it in the comments. With that said, imagine this scenario, you have index HTML. In there you have a heading with surprise, surprise, a heading class, and then a list with each list item having a class of list item. And if I want to select the heading as well as all the list items, most likely in the app JS, you're going to go with query selector for the heading. And there you go, I have my heading. And the same goes for list. The only difference is that you'll use a query selector all. And all of this is nice. But the problem starts if you mess the selector. So if I'm going to select something that doesn't exist, you'll notice that in console, we'll get back null and empty node list. And again, in such a small application, it's not a big deal. The problem starts where you're already adding more code. For example, you already start adding event listeners, you keep adding there already some logic, and then something doesn't work. And then you need to start chasing the bug, correct? And in fact, bug is very silly, where you haven't selected the element. And therefore, it's very nifty to set up a helper function that does all the heavy lifting for you. Now, what am I talking about? Well, for starters, I'll make sure that my console is clean. And then let's come up with a function. Let's say here const get element. And again, this is something that you'd probably set up in a separate module. But I don't want to do that in this video. And therefore, I'll do it in the same document. So I'm going to go with get element. And this function is going to be looking for one thing for now. Eventually, there's going to be more. For now, I'm just going to be looking for selector. And then I want to come up with a variable name is really up to you. I'm just going to go with element, then we've set it equal to document query selector. And then I pass in the selector. So now I'm selecting it. And before I do anything before I return it, I want to check whether the element actually exists. Remember, if there was no heading, basically, if there's something wrong with the selector, we got back null, correct. So we just say here, if element exists, so if it's not null, only then I want to return it. And if there's some kind of issue, it's actually very nifty to throw an error, because that way you'll right away see, hey, there's something wrong with my selection. So we'll go here with throw new error. And as far as the value, well, that's really up to you, whatever error message you prefer, because you'll see that error message. So in my case, I'm going to set it up as please double check selector and then I'll pass in the selector. So whatever selector I have in there. Now, since I'm returning element, we might as well right away go with console log. Now, if you want to assign it to a variable, be my guess, but in my case, I'll right away set it up in the console log, I'll say get element, let's start with an element that does exist. So we go with heading and check it out. I have my heading, but if I mess up my selection, voila, I have my error. So that way, I know right away, hey, there's something wrong with my selector. So I better fix that right now. I better go and double check my HTML before I keep on piling on the logic. Make sense? Now let's work on the list, because that one is tiny bit different. In this case, we're working with query selector all. And what that means is that instead of null, I'm getting back empty array. And if you want, you can set up a separate function. For example, you can say get elements, and that one will just be checking for a list. In my case, I'll show you how we can actually add that logic in here. Again, this really comes down to preference. And the way it works, we can here say is list, which is going to be a Boolean. And for starters, I'm just going to add the code, I want this functionality to work. And then we will refactor it. So we have, I guess, less lines of code. And that is typically my approach where I don't try to factor everything right from the get go, because that way I don't have to chase some 
silly bugs. So in here, we'll say if is list is there. So if there's going to be a true here, the second argument, if that is the case, what do I want to do? Well, then I want to use this thing, correct? And also remember that we're getting back here this node list. And what that means is that we cannot use map and things like that on it. So it's kind of like an array, but it's not really. So we can also combine some more logic here, where I can set up a spread operator and turn this into array. So in here, I'm going to say, if is list. So if it's a list that I'm selecting, then it's going to be a const, again, element or elements, that's really up to you. And then we go with document, then query selector all, we pass in the selector. But what I want to do right now is take my spread operator and turn this into a array. Then we get back the element. Okay, that's awesome. Now what I want to do is check whether the length is less than one. If it's less than one, that means what? Well, that means that there are no elements in that list. Correct. And again, we can throw the error. So let's go here. Let's say if element length is less than one, what do we want to do? Well, we want to throw here this error. If it's not the case, then we'll just return the element. And please keep in mind that if list is true, then we'll just hit this condition. And we're not going to move on to the next one. And like I already said, we will refactor it in a second. So let's go here with return element. And once I save now, I mean, is list is not true. I haven't passed anything. And I'm clearly selecting a heading. So let me just double check. Yep. And I'm still getting the error. But now if I change this around, and if I say list hyphen item, and then I set it equal to true. So second argument is going to be equal to true. So now I'm selecting a list, you'll notice that I'm clearly getting back the list. Now, if I'll mess up this selector, now what do I have, I have please double check selector list, and then whatever the value, which means that our functionality works. Now the last step is basically combine both of these. So we have less code. And let me do it this way. I'm just going to start everything from scratch, apart from throw new error. So let me remove all of this. And let's go step by step. So first, I want to check what is the value of is list, and we'll set it equal to element, then we'll say is list and we'll use ternary operator. I'll say if the is list is true, what do I want to use? Well, I want to use right away my spread operator. And then we'll set it up as document, and then query selector, correct all. And then what will we pass in when we pass in the selector? Make sense. Then if it's not true, what do we do? Well, we use this guy, we use document selector, the good old one. And then as far as the value the same deal we pass in the selector. So that's out of the way. And effectively, now we have what choices? Well, we have not a list. And if that is the case, we just want to check, does it exist or not? And then the second option, it is a list. So we say, okay, it's a list. And now we want to check, is it empty or not? All right. Now, again, we will refactor this even more in a second. But what we can simply say, if and then if it's not a list, and if it exists, because basically, if it's not a list, it either exists, or it doesn't exist. And remember that this error will automatically run if we basically not matching this condition, correct? So if it's not a list, an element exists, then what do I want to do? I want to return that element. Now, if it is a list, I want to check whether it is empty or not. So let me copy and paste. And we'll say if it is a list, then I also want to make sure that this is not empty. So if it's a list, if it's not empty, a element length, and less than one, if that's the case, then return the element. And now lastly, like I said, we can combine this even more. I'm personally not the biggest fan. I actually like this one, where I can clearly see what's happening. But if you are, here's what you can do. So let me just comment these suckers out. And then let's write it in one line, let's say if, then we want to take this. So that's the first thing that we're checking, we'll have to put this in a parentheses, then we'll place or 
So that's our second condition, and then take this code. And if either of them are true, basically, if we match one of the conditions, then we return the element. And again, let's check it out here. So list item in such a form, there is no selector. So that's going to be a error. But if we select properly, we should get back the list. So that functionality works. But if I try to do that with a heading, and if I say, yep, I want to select single heading, but if I mess up the selector, then I'll have my error. Again, it's very useful if you have a bigger application, there's multiple ways how you can set up. But this is my choice when it comes to selecting elements in vanilla JS, because that way I can right away see whether I'm selecting the proper element. That's about it for this video. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in the next one.